Travis Ryer and Charlie Potter of the BamaOnline.com staff on a Friday afternoon from the University of Alabama with another edition of Instant Analysis. Charlie, as busy as this place was a week ago, <laughs> kind of quiet inside Coleman Coliseum right now as the Alabama men's basketball team prepares to head over to Athens for what is, you know, they've, they've all been huge of late, but to maintain some semblance of hope as an at-large team for the NCAA tournament, Got to have this one tomorrow over Stegman Coliseum, I got to think. Yeah, it all starts with this one, but you have to have the philosophy. You just got to keep winning. You know, you don't want to look ahead, but at the same time, you know that you, you can't just go to the SEC tournament and fall flat like you did at home against Arkansas. Um, you know, it's, it's a big game for Alabama. They're going to need a lot more help than just from what Retina Basahan has given them. And um, it, it's a big time win. I mean, this, your, your season essentially, uh, from a postseason standpoint, hinges on this game. Uh, if, you, if you don't get a win, you can basically just cross yourself off the list. I don't think they would be considered if they drop two right here at the end of the season. Yeah, I pretty much have to go into win the SEC tournament mode yeah. or go to the NIT if you're this team, if they do fall in Athens on Saturday. And really right now, I think, and I'm listening to Avery Johnson down there just a minute ago, a question of confidence with this team. Really had it during the five-game winning streak, seemed to peak against LSU on the road. Since then, haven't had it as much. Been on a little bit of a steady decline. I thought he touched on it too. Guys not as willing to pull the trigger, it seems like, other than Retno Basahan. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, the Mississippi State game, I think they went in with a, an added sense of confidence, maybe too much. I don't think that's even a maybe. I think that's a given uh, fact almost. But And then from there, it's just dropped off. Um, you know, Riley Norris, who played really well at the beginning of SEC play, has been – you know, uh, MIA, we haven't seen mm -hmm. him really. Uh, Shannon Hale's shot hasn't really fallen. Uh, same can be said for Justin Coleman. And, you know, you eliminate those three guys and who else you look for. Um, you know, Arthur Edwards is what he is. And he's been a great contributor for this team, but he's not going to give you, you know, 15 points a game. Uh, that's just the way it's been this season. So, um, you know, Retina Vassan, I would think, has been getting that uh, back of his eyes pretty heavily because he's been carrying the team, but it's just not been enough. Yeah, and guys like – Edwards and Norris and Hale, they want some room to get that shot off. And you're seeing teams pretty much run them off the three-point line. They're not going to let them catch and shoot. They're going to make them put it on the floor and try to beat them in other ways. And they understand, I think, opponents do, that Retton can beat them off the dribble. But as we've seen, if Retton goes for 30 and the next closest guy goes for 10, like he did the other night, and everybody else is six and under, you got a good chance of beating this team right now. So. Confidence, something certainly to keep an eye on, especially early in this game. Not a great matchup, I don't think, for Alabama. Really on the road and against a team with two quality guards that can both score and put the ball in the bucket. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe playing on the road will be a good thing because they haven't been great at home in conference play, especially of late. Yeah, I mean, I think, too, um, which you could say this for last week, um, they're embracing that underdog role again, and that's where they've really played their best basketball. Um, you know, talking about the NCAA tournament, um, I don't think anybody, even Avery included, you know, thought they'd be in this position to, you know, be able to maybe, you know, win some games in the SEC tournament to make it in, uh, and maybe even make the NLT. I don't know if he thought that they'd be here, but, you know, with the win uh, Saturday, you know, they, they finished 500 in SEC play, and I think that's, um, being from a perspective of, of realism, I guess, that, that's a quality you know, first year for Avery. Um, with what his, he's been handed and what this team's proved to, to be uh, for him. And he said it too, you got to go through this process a lot of times before you can actually achieve while going through it. And I think that's, if nothing else, a real benefit to them this year. They've, they're in a spot none of us really expected them yeah. to be in in the last week of the regular season heading into the conference tournament. So if they get a win Saturday, that's great. As you said, if they don't, uh, it's been a great learning process for this team to this point. Some other sports going on right now. Uh, baseball makes its way to North Carolina for the weekend. A road trip over to Cary, North Carolina. Going to take on Notre Dame, NC State, and some snowbirds over there. Uh, Notre Dame coming up later this afternoon. This is a team that didn't uh, always score in a ton of runs, but it looks like the pitching has lived up to the billing so far. Oh, no, no doubt. That's, uh, that's been the, the strength of the team. Uh, you know, Mitch Gaspard called that from the – beginning and you know he's been a profit from that sense but it's also gotten some offensive production from younger guys mm -hmm. Keith Holcomb 
uh, when he's been with the team. He wasn't with them Wednesday night in Troy because he was making a trip to the White House, which is understandable. <laughs> but uh, he's been a spark at the top. Uh, Chandler Taylor's been all he was advertised. Kobe Vance has been a great at second base. So they've, they've gotten production from young guys just up to those veterans in the lineup like Georgie Salem and, and other guys to, to step up and you know, get their bats hot. And I think if they do, you know, Alabama could surprise some people. Those five through eight spots, they've got to get figured out. You're right. There's three freshmen hitting really in the top four spots right now and producing at a pretty good clip. Salem, the catching catcher's position especially, is struggling right now behind the plate between a couple of guys. Got to get some of those things sorted out. But the starting pitching, you get it to the bullpen to Matt Foster uh, and Thomas Burroughs in the eighth and the ninth with a lead. You feel really good about your chances of closing people out. So interesting to see how they do over there. Uh, this weekend, Patrick Murphy softball team home once again, really about all that's going on around here this weekend. It's a ghost town other than that. Second ranked Crimson Tide hosting a handful of teams uh, once again this weekend. So some good softball over at uh, Road Stadium, if you want to check that out. Uh, spring football, we obviously got to touch on that. Coming up uh, one week from today, Charlie. It's, it's insane. The annual pre-spring break practice before he lets them go to spring break, Nick Saban. So, uh, give me an area or two that's really in the forefront of your mind for this football team as they get ready to get things going a week from today. I don't want to go with the obvious because I think everyone wants to know what the quarterback position right. looks like. I think it's going to be pretty much a uh, seniority breakdown to start things off. They're not going to throw you know everything out uh, in the first day. But I'm, I want to be interested to see um, how the offensive line shakes up. You know, I wrote about them today. And just talking about center and right tackle, you know, I would I would venture to say that J.C. Hausenauer steps in at, at center the first day, and then Charles Baldwin would probably be at right tackle, just because Alabama doesn't bring JUCO guys in to, to warm the bench. Yeah. But um, that's that's just my prediction. I have no idea how to shape up. And there's there's a lot of guys behind them uh, with plenty of talent that, that could step in. So those are the I think the two areas offensively that I'd be looking at, and then defensively, I just want to see what the linebackers do. Um, you know, I think the secondary is going to be interesting. The defensive line is going to be fine, but you know, can Reuben Foster step into a leadership uh, role that they need him to? And, and who steps in beside him? Will it be Sean Dion Hamilton or Will Keith Holcomb, who everybody's talking about with baseball? Will he make a step in the right direction? So those, I think, are the key areas that I'll be looking for, as, as well as everything else. Yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of areas to watch. Yeah. And I agree with you on the offensive line. Brent Key coming in now working with that offensive line. Maybe a clean slate for some of those interior guys that could use it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see how the competition plays out really across that entire right side. But I like the, the interior young guys they've got. They've got some solid players. You're right about Baldwin, I think. Uh, traditionally, they bring in those guys to play from junior college. I want to see Jonah Williams on the field, the true freshman, mid-year enrollee, has a lot of promise. You know, defensively, the secondary will be interesting to watch too. I think their top two corners and top two safeties aren't all that hard to figure out. But the third corner, the third safety, Kendall Sheffield at corner, does he come on? Uh, who's the third safety? You know, who makes a bit of a move there? That's going to be a lot of fun to watch play out. So plenty of question marks, plenty of storylines, and we'll have them all covered right here on BOL. Anything else, Charlie? Just going back to the, the interior line, you know, there, there are guys that you just completely forget about. Um, you know, I was talking with another guy that covers the team and just completely forgot about Brandon Kennedy. Like there's, yeah. it's just, there's so many bodies at guard and at center that, mm -hmm. um, and able bodies that you just kind of forget about some guys. And, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a nice uh, problem to have. They, they have no issues in terms of depth inside. Dallas Warmack uh, moved up to a second team type status as a true freshman last season. Um, Richie so, Pettibon. Yeah, Richie Pettibon's coming off a red shirt. Plenty of guys that can compete. Lester Cotton, maybe he slides in there. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch and see how that offensive line plays out. Charlie, that'll just about do it, I guess. Yep. So for Charlie Potter, I'm Travis Schreier, reminding you to keep it right here on BamaOnline.com for complete coverage of University of Alabama athletics.